to change your life and your line, consider joining us. My friends, the New Testament is not only extremely erroneous, but is also full of pagan imagery. The Jews of old would have spotted it from the outset. So how can Christians blame Jews for not accepting the message in the time of Jesus? For example, the Lord's Supper was not invented by Paul, but was borrowed from Mithraism, the mystery religion that existed long before Christianity, and was Christianity's chief competitor up until the time of Constantine. In Mithraism, the central figure is the mystical Mithras who died for the sins of mankind and was resurrected. Believers in Mithra were rewarded with eternal life. Part of the Mithraic communion liturgy includes the words, He who will not eat my body and drink of my blood, so that he will be made one with me and I with him, the same shall not know salvation. Sounds familiar, huh? Please, people, open your eyes. But again... Let's not get sidetracked. The field of blood that supposedly was purchased by Judas. Who purchased it? Who purchased it, my friends? In Acts chapter 1, verse 18, it states that Judas buys the field. However, we read in Matthew chapter 27, verse 7, that the chief priest bought it. Also, how did Judas die? In Matthew 27, verse 5, Judas hangs himself. However, in Acts chapter 1 verse 18 it states that there in the field that he bought, he fell headlong and burst open and his inside spilled out. Interesting, huh? Well, according to the Apostle Paul, neither of the above is true. Paul says Jesus appeared to the twelve disciples after his resurrection. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 3 to 5 we are told, For what I received I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. <laughs> Makes no sense. Also, in Matthew 19, verse 28, Jesus tells the twelve disciples, including Judas, that when Jesus rules from his throne, they will sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So much confusion. Also, how did the field of blood get its name? Matthew says because it was purchased with blood money. Matthew 27, verse 6 through 8. Acts says because of the bloody mess caused by Judas bursting open. Acts chapter 1, verse 18 through 19. Please, friends, please, follow truth. Follow truth. <sighs> More. Where was Jesus taken immediately after his arrest? Matthew, Mark, and Luke say that Jesus was taken directly to the high priest. Which states in Matthew 26, 57, Mark 14, 53, and Luke 22, 54. However, John says that Jesus was first taken to Annas, the father-in-law of the high priest. As it states in John 18, 13. Who after an indefinite period of time sent Jesus to the high priest. John 18, 24. I'll give you more. What was Barabbas' crime? Mark chapter 15 verse 7 and Luke 23 verse 19 says, Barabbas was guilty of insurrection and murder. However, John 18 verse 40 says that Barabbas was a robber. Also, according to Luke 24 verse 51, Jesus' ascension took place in Bethany on the same day as his resurrection. But, according to Acts, chapter 1, verse 9 through 12, Jesus' ascension took place at the Mount of Olives, 40 days after his resurrection. Why, my friends? Why? Romans, chapter 9, verse 13 states, Just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Can someone please find that in the Torah? My friends, you can't, because they made it up. How do you distort my Bible and have the chutzpah to condemn me to hell for not accepting yours? Matthew even confused two characters of Jewish scripture. Matthew chapter 23 verse 35 states that upon you 
may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, the son of Berechias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. The incident that Jesus is alluding to is recorded in 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles 24, verse 20 to 21 states, And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehodiah, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus says the Lord, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper, because ye have forsaken the Lord? He, he hath also forsaken you. And they conspired against me and stoned him with the stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. You see, the Hebrew scripture records that Zechariah was the son of Jehodiah, not Berechiah. Berechiah actually was the father of the prophet Zechariah, who lived several decades after. As it states in Zechariah 1.1, In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah. This book, the New Testament, is so, is so erroneous. Inspired, huh? Actually, all this explains what Paul was trying to say in 2 Timothy 3.16. That all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Being that when Paul was speaking these words, there was no New Testament. So he could only have been referring to God's holy Torah. I'll give you some more. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 5 states, Therefore when Christ came into the world, He said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Now, what He was trying to quote was Psalm chapter 40 verse 6, which states, Sacrifices and offerings you did not desire, but my ears you have opened for me. <laughs> How can you distort the Jewish Bible like that? My friends, I could go on and on. Don't take my word for it. Research it yourself and then pray about it. Before ending this video, I want to let you know that God loves you and has a plan for your life. It's not an accident that you're watching me today. God is calling you, just as He called our father Abraham. He is calling you to leave the place you are at and go to the place He wants you to be. My friends, if you're interested in converting to Judaism, I want you to call your local Orthodox synagogue and tell the rabbi, I want to be Jewish. He may test your sincerity, but persevere, and one day you will be Jewish. This video is only part one of the series. I, Asher Meza, want to thank you for watching, and God bless.